Hi, everyone. I'm Ken Rakowski. That's Sandy Grigsby. And for the next hour, we're just going to talk about things that help you out, make you a better person, enlighten you. Let's call it personal development. But before we go there, we're in a new city. Where are we today? We are in Abu Dhabi, and we have a view of the Royal Palace, whatever the thing is called. Yeah, the Royal Palace. It's pa really, really fancy. I, I, it's like, ah. I, I could show some pictures, which I will. So we're in the capital of the United Arab Emirates which comprises of five different states. And we're in the, the primary state, which is really interesting because you would not expect this to be the richest of the two or of the five states. You would think Dubai is. So you compare this, let's say, you said this is, you said Dubai's like Sydney, right? Yeah, so Dubai would be like Sydney. And this is like Brisbane. And no, this would be like, if you leave Sydney and you go over to like Man, Manly Beach. Manly Beach, okay, <laughs> all in the same area. This is, uh, this is the where all the money is. Just to give you an idea, this is a shocker. So generally when countries um, make money, countries make money through primarily two ways, tariffs and taxes. That's how a country makes money. And with that money, they spend it on infrastructure, entitlements for their citizens, defense. That's what a country spends it on. When there's money left over, they put it into an external investment fund called a sovereign wealth fund. And that sovereign wealth fund is to make external investments of their own country. So a sovereign wealth fund would buy, for example, China's bought tons of US mortgages, or um, Japan has bought buildings in different parts of the United States, even golf courses. So if you look at the biggest wealth funds in the world, the biggest wealth funds in the world means there's so much money left over, they invest externally. Abu Dhabi, this little teeny state, city has enough money to buy Canada. This one city, its <laughs> sovereign wealth fund is one of the biggest in the world. It could buy Canada if it wanted to. So as we go around, we see opulence everywhere, right? Do you agree with me? Uh, it's insane. But there is a difference. This is more of a beach community than Dubai. Don't you agree? Uh, yeah, if you guys could look at our window right now, there is an island, a whole island. You can see it from the window because it's very small and it has a few Here. lots on it big Here. enough for some mansions. Here, let me show you. Let me show you real quick. Write this off. Let's give you. Is it a, is it a real island or man made island? It's man made. You can kind of see there's a man made island right there. And that's where there's houses. I can't go to our other view, but I'm going to show you some photos. Is Canada for sale, just out of curiosity? It's like, how, how did they know that they can buy Canada? Did they make an offer and they Can, Canada's, and they price, Canada's price tag is $2.2 trillion is what they estimated. You look at what country's GDP is and how much you could buy a country for, you get an estimate. I'm just saying they could buy Canada, just FYI, okay? As in what the value of that place is. So let me see if I could pull if up. If you were Canada and you didn't want to be bought by the Middle East, you'd be, oop, good luck. No, but you wouldn't be mind, you wouldn't mind being bought by these guys. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Sandy's humor is so ahead of mine. She's so much more advanced. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm, and is that 2.2 yeah, two trillion Canadian? No. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me give you an idea real quick. It's rupees. Oh, yeah. Rupia. <laughs> so I'm gonna share my screen just to give you a couple of cool shots from Abu Dhabi, before we jump into our topic, which we have a great topic today, and that's all around facing our fear. Let me share our screen, and here's some photos. So this right here is the Atlantis, which is, uh, there's multiple Atlantis, one's in the Bahamas, there's one in Dubai, but this is the Atlantis Hotel, as you can see the size of that, look at that, look at that hotel. It's massive, that's just one. And then, and this is on an island, another man-made island, and then next to it, this is the palace. Yeah, we can see that from the other side. So look at, so this would be the equivalent to the White House in America. Look at this. <laughs> it makes the White House or look- Or many White Houses. Yeah, it looks like the the White House is a closet compared to this. That it's would be much harder to storm, way. for sure. Oh, what was that, Stephen? That would be much harder to storm, for sure. <laughs> yeah, with the walls they have here are pretty intense. <laughs> but look at the size of this. And behind it is it's another island that was just made to protect this which is pretty crazy. So these are islands that they've made to protect that 
incredible fortress. Let's see if there's another one I could show you. Yes. Yeah, so see. you're telling you're telling me the Taj Mahal can fit inside of the palace? Oh, easily, easily. <laughs> Let's see if there's another one. No, that's just my hottie. What? You are hot. Okay, show and tell is over. Show and tell is over. Okay, I'm trying to get out of it. Just got the I got the um, the hook pulling me off stage. Hi, Nor. <laughs> All right, so that that's what we're experiencing. A couple of things that we're seeing here. First, what do you think about how things are organized? In what way? Everything here is organized. <laughs> this is really true, which is kind of interesting because we were looking at the difference between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, which is about an hour and a half away in the car. Every state almost functions like a different country. So in order for us to drive to Abu Dhabi, like I said, it's an hour away, what do we have to do at the border? You have to get a DPI test, which is like a test that hasn't been implemented anywhere else. They take a finger prick, a drop of your blood, and then they put it under a laser that within a second to 10 seconds can tell you if you have an active COVID infection. Yeah, it's only available here. So it's not the same as the test that does antibodies. It's not that test, it's different. So it actually lasers and it looks for cells that looks a specific way and tells you if you have an active infection. And that's the only way you could get to Abu Dhabi. Now get this, if you're here more than six days. You have to take a PCR test up the nose. Up the nose. So they are so stringent and strict here to make sure there's no cases popping up. Dubai is a lot more open, <laughs> a lot more open. And they're actually starting to go through a situation because a bunch of Brits for New Year's flew to Dubai and unfortunately they spread COVID in Dubai. So it's safer here in this city than it is there. Yeah. Yeah, a lot safer. Hi, Ragna. So that's the first thing. Second, let's tell you how much this works. So Sandy and I, we came over here on, today is Thursday for us. Or no, Wednesday, no, today's Wednesday. 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 We came here on we Sunday. We have no idea of days. Yeah, we're, we're starting to lose life. days and times because we're <laughs> always on Zoom. Everything's a work day. Yeah, and in one country, it's one day, and then it's a different day, and a different time, we're like, oh. So Sunday, we drove here. Friends of ours were going to surprise us, and they left a few hours behind us. So Sandy and I, we get our, our blood work up and we're both of course negative and we get through, which was pretty cool. They're only a few hours behind us and they both tested positive. Now the irony is we were with them. I was with them on Saturday. You were, I wasn't with them. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, obviously I'm fine, you're fine. We have nothing but they did, which was pretty close, but it shows you that that test is very aggressive. So this part of United Arab Emirates has almost no COVID cases because they're not letting anyone in. And if you do come in here, you're quarantined for 14 days. So imagine different states in the United States or different parts of South Africa having different rule sets. So Joburg would be different than Cape Town or New York would be different than Florida. That's how it is here. Everywhere you go has different rule sets and you have to comply to them unless you are from an ambassador or have diplomatic plates, right? And you can just go where you want, park where you want, do what you want without tests. Yeah, we, we found this Super out. Super spreader. We, no, they're not. No, we <laughs> found this out yesterday. We spent uh, time with the ambassador to the kingdom of Tonga, which thank is you, amazing. Mighty Paul. Mighty Paul, thank you for that. And, and you know how we know that we were at the right place, Mighty Paul? Oh, you got to tell them, right? As we walk into this giant tower and lobby, it was immaculate marble everywhere, beautiful sofas, still had Christmas decorations up. And I'm like, what is happening here? Point is, it was pretty intense. And by the elevators, we see this six foot four massive dude. Five, 500 pounds. 500 pounds, we're like, I think that's our escort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he made you look tiny, Paul. Yeah, we were tiny, Paul. He was oh huge. my gosh. So he walked us in and uh, they were a delight. We'll give you more information on Tonga. I'm just gonna say we're hoping to do a really cool metal trip to Tonga in the future, uh, which is a, an island kingdom. That kingdom, has zero COVID. Zero COVID cases. There's only five countries in the entire world that have zero COVID cases and that's one of them. And uh, there's a reason why is because they let nobody in, even their own citizens if you've been traveling externally. 
The it's, only way you can get into Tonga is going through New Zealand and New Zealand's letting no one in. Yeah. So you have must have already been in New Zealand to get to Tonga. Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. But that's that's another story. But it, he told us with diplomatic flights, you don't have to get those tests as you cross the borders. You get to park anywhere you want and drive through any border you want. A uh, cool. couple more things we want to tell you. Because there's so many cultures here, like we think in America, we're kind of a melting pot, not compared to here. So much so is the stores. We went shopping yesterday at a place called Lulu. Lulu Hypermarket. Lulu Hypermarket. We walked three miles in a grocery store because we could not stop walking at every single aisle going, okay, we're in India now. Oh, we're in Afghanistan now. Okay, now we're in China. Because every single type of food that you would ever imagine in your entire mind was there. They had so many types of fish that I was like, what is that? <laughs> like one had a tail. They had one that looked like a monster and little teeth like, ah! I was like, ah! They had oysters with shuckers and every, I mean, anything you can fathom was there. And I can't even imagine. And the fruits and vegetables, I've seen stuff that I, like these weird potatoes out of China that were like this big. I don't even know how or you- Or the ones out of the Uganda that were this big. Craziness. And it was cheap compared to what we're used to. Oh, so inexpensive. Yeah, so we, we're finding going to the supermarket to get prepared meals, really nice prepared meals, is a fraction of us going out to a restaurant, even in the United States. So. A prepared meal for us might cost $2, $3? Yeah, at most. A prepared meal. And we're talking about a sizable meal and the quality level is off the chart. Yeah. So what their, F their FDA here, the Food and Drug Administration is super, super protective of food and everything's organic. Oh my God. They have organic oatly. <laughs> we don't even have organic oatly in the US. <laughs> Just oat milk. They grow their own fruits and vegetables in the stores too. So you could actually pick lettuce that was grown in the store. So it's kind of mind blowing what we're seeing in different parts. And maybe because it's so small, these areas, because they're not massive size. You know, Dubai is the only city in Dubai. In Abu Dhabi is really the only big city in Abu Dhabi. These are states, by the way. So the state and the city are named the same. So it's easier to control stuff because proximity, but it is mind blowing. And then the last thing is- Oh, I got to tell them go what one of my favorite things. Oh yeah, things. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So one of my favorite things about Dubai, Abu Dhabi, it doesn't matter where you are in this country, any public restroom you use, oh, yeah. you can close your eyes and pick one, are sparkling clean. I mean, to the point where they have attendants in there full time. As soon as you go in and use the bathroom, they rush in after you, hose it down, disinfect it and scrub it. And you walk in again, it's like sparkling clean. But we're and talking about every a, single bathroom, period, that's across the, key. the board. Yeah, if you go into a crappy ass gas station bathroom, like, oh, it's a gas station bathroom, you know, it's clean. It's so clean. The subway, people go in the subway gas stations, maybe they might take a shower because they have water facilities because of the praying that they do. Yeah, you, it's amazing. It's, a, it's immaculate. And there are bathrooms everywhere and they're free. So you can go walking down the street and have to go to the bathroom and they go oh, right there. And there's like this beautiful, meticulous, gorgeous bathroom. You're like, what? One thing that's different for us in the States that we don't have in most bathrooms is bidets. Bidets are everywhere here. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere there's a bidet. It's like, oh, you know, most Americans wouldn't even know what that is. They think, oh, I wash my face in that. Don't do that. Uh, they actually <laughs> use it for other people. And the maids get really it's, mad. It's, <laughs> you do not do a number two in your bidet. No, people, are you oh, serious? Oh, that's what Americans are notorious for. They're so blank when it comes to that. They're like, what is that? Oh, I think I know. No. Uh, wrong answer. <laughs> Nor's laughing because he knows. He knows what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. Any any questions before we dive into our topic today? Anyone? The, I have a question. Eddie. The, are they growing the food? You said in, inside, is it like um, hydroponically or yep. vertically? Wow, and that's it's, a it's, it's vertical, yeah. so it's vertical all farming. their stacked hydroponic stations. You can see the little mist spraying them. It's amazing. Yeah, in stores that would be equivalent to like Walmart's. Yeah. It's not high-end stores. It's not like you're going to a Erewhon or a Whole Foods. It's like a Walmart and they're growing the food for you. And, and we have to say that their Erewhon Whole Foods comparable store makes Erewhon Whole Foods look like yeah. Kmart. 
Yeah, it's it's another level. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what we're going to experience today, which we haven't yet, the one thing we cannot find everywhere we go, and it's going to be so ridiculous what we're about to say, dryers. Yeah. I'm sorry. I love fluffy towels. But if you're staying at someone's house, expect those crunchy munchers. Yeah, are because horrible. there's, ah. they, and we're talking nice houses. They're putting it outside on some type of laundry line to dry, which is weird. So we had to drop our stuff off today or yes, two days ago at a laundromat. We'll see what it's like to get back. But dryers, Sammy, please tell me you found a dryer for us in <laughs> Bali because we really, miss it. okay, like good. <laughs> 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 here and here they have those machines that wash and dry at the same time which means by the time it's done putting hot air on your wet clothes in a small compartment you take everything out it's so wrinkled you can barely get it out with an iron oh, yeah. these are such first world problems oh my gosh okay a couple of things real quick <laughs> i just want to do a check-in with everybody that's here we have 15 wonderful delightful people that are joining us hey just this is what i want us all to do we're about to dive into our for a deep conversation and it's really important. I want check-in and the check-in is, how are you physically? These are all one words. How are you physically? How are you mentally? And how are you present right now? So right now, present wise, how are you physically? One word, how are you mentally? And then how are you spiritually? That's probably a better term, spiritually. Physical, mental, spiritual. One word, quick, Everybody unmute themselves and let's do this really fast. Okay. Everyone unmute themselves and Alan physical, mental, spiritual, go for it. Strong, Strong. Uh, sharp and within spiritual. Good. Within Eddie. Um, grounded, happy and happy. <laughs> Two happies. Angie. Uh, but crazy and fulfilled. And fulfilled. Jace. Elevated, manic, and hopeful. Elevated, manic, and hopeful. Wow. Okay. Joette. Strong. Spiritually, I'm very strong. Emotionally, I'm very well. And physically, I'm strong. Yeah, I'm good. I like that. John. Wonderful, excited, and ready. And ready. Damn. Mighty Paul. Uh, happy, tired, and alert. Nor. Strong, happy, and spiritually? Was it happy? Spiritually. Balanced. Balanced. Sammy. Uh, persistent, active, blessed. Aragna. Uh, strong, happy, and I think fulfilled. Z. Sorry. Uh, healthy, excited, at peace. What was the last one? Yes. At peace. Happy. Happy. Got it. Let's go to uh, Janae. Janae, if you're on this call, everyone, please camera and unmute. Okay, Marco. Marco. Sleepy, focused, and balanced. And balanced. Steven. Joyful, melancholy, and supercharged. Sandy. Fancy, <laughs> awoke, and ready. <laughs> uh, and energized. Uh, mentally, physically, powerful, and spiritual connected. All right. We got to talk about fears. Let's do it. So when Sandy and I started dating two it years ago, scary. <laughs> it was fun. It wasn't scary. Oh, come on. It wasn't scary. Okay. When we started dating, you showed me this huge whiteboard that you folded together it was cardboard from a tony robbins event that you went to now people don't understand i want you to understand when we say do the work and we brought this up in the past that means you've done the work on yourself not just coding like what jace is doing right now where just wearing probably boxer shorts 
Um, <laughs> and we're not just talking about work when it comes to your muscles, like working out. We're talking about the internal side of making you a better human being, the responsibility of making you more connected to you. And when someone does the work, they become more aware, mm -hmm. right? And you needed to do the work because a lot of past trend transgressions and situations were holding you down like a weight and they do, do it for all of us, right? Yes. So when you did the work, you started to see changes in your life. Yes. And one of the biggest changes was identifying your fears, challenging your fears, and then giving rule sets to those fears. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So kind of explain first, how do we identify a fear? How do we know what we are quote unquote fearful? We're not just talking about fear heights. Yeah, we're not talking about like fear of spiders. Ooh, spiders. Yeah. Fear of like cat's teeth. Yeah, some people are afraid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're talking, you know, they're like, oh, if the cat bites me, it has a, like venom and it'll okay. like make my hand die or whatever. Um, no, we're talking about those deep seated fears, those things that are holding you back, those things that are preventing you from taking that next step, doing that next big thing, getting into that relationship making that change in your life, whatever is kind of putting the brakes on your life and things you've got going on, that kind of fear. And those fears happen because either you were burned in the past or let's face it, fear of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen. So you almost are preventing yourself from experiencing it. Like time to dive into the deep end type thing. Yeah. So those fears, like for example, I have a fear of guilt. I mean, I, I feel guilty about so many things, probably because I come from a Catholic upbringing and guilt has been embedded into us ever since we we're a young kid. And that guilt doesn't allow me to get past things. I, I almost toil in certain things where I sit and go, oh my God, I'm so guilty for what I, I'm about to do, so I don't do it, mm -hmm. or what I have done. And it just harbors inside me like a tumor that grows and because of that, it doesn't allow me to get beyond it. I can't grow up. Nope. So that's my, why are you smiling, Sammy? Sammy, wait, microphone, unmute. No, yeah, no, sorry. I'm just, it just feels so good. I'm listening to you, but also I'm being present with Joette because I haven't seen her in a while, so. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> so this whole guilt thing is my fear. I have a fear of guilt. I personally also have a fear of my legacy. What, if I die today, did I accomplish the things that I should have accomplished either for my own namesake, for my kids, for Sandy, for my community? Oh my God, oh my God, I have to work so, so, so hard. And I don't work smart at times because I'm trying to get as much. It's almost like going to a buffet and they go, hey, you could eat as much as you want. You go, yeah, what do we do? I'm gonna go after the desserts first. <laughs> yes. And you and you never eat any of the good stuff because you eat all the crap first. And I think what happens is my fear of legacy, I do crap stuff to look like I'm doing a whole bunch of things. I might not be doing the right things. So those are my two fears I wanted to explain. What are two of your fears? Oh, geez. <laughs> well, no, because you used to have fears. Let me rephrase that. I used that. to have, yes. yeah, now my fears have, shifted and are not as powerful but they're not real fears yeah they're just like me but um they used to be uh a fear that i was so far behind everybody else Good one. that yeah. was a big one like i would say god all my friends are in successful jobs are married have kids all these things why don't i have those things so that was probably my biggest fear yep um and then my next biggest fear would have been Trying to blink right now. What <laughs> um, well, keep that one real quick. Yeah, that would be the biggest one. I'd like to hear some of your fears. Z, what kind of fear, what fears do you have in your life right now? Fears. Um, well, when Sandy said what she just said right now, that's exactly how I feel all the time. I'm like, mm. I'm behind. You're behind everybody else. Yeah, well, it's behind the marks I set for myself. I didn't. Like I left the house really young at 17 and never really had guidance. I just kind of like did shit I thought was right. <laughs> you know, just got here. I'm doing that. Yeah, so, you did it all by yourself. Okay, got it. I want to yeah. understand that. Jace, what's a fear of yours? Connection. Fear of connection. I mean, able to connect with people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's simple. Um, I mean, you, you summarized it. Just uh, been burned a lot in the past. And uh, I feel like I'm 
when I'm not connected, I'm more productive. And so I guess it's like a, a cycle. It's like the more I'm connected, I'm afraid that I'm missing out on more opportunities. Mm. Got it. Okay, let's do that. Nor, what's the fear of yours? I'd say my fear is uh, not living my best or fullest potential. Not being the best you can be. Yeah. So failure. Yeah. Hear that? This is important because I think this is one that strikes many of us. The fear of failure. I, I go through that also. I go through that also. Angie, what would be a fear of yours? Um, you know, with you guys coming on, what I've really, really learned, because we've come from such a humble background, I have a fear of talking to people like you because I feel I'm not on the same level. So what's been really interesting is you have such normal people that I think, oh, I can relate to them. I can relate. Gosh, they're really posh people and they're really important people, but I can actually talk to them. So it's been really a growth for me because I would never come near you. I mean, when you were in South Africa, I wouldn't even dream because I thought, oh, my gosh, what would I say to What words would I use for these people? You're being less than. Okay, that's, but that's not really what your fear is. Your fear is? Being less than. Being less than. Being less than your surroundings, the people around you. Very, very important. Let's go to Marco. Marco, what's your fear? So I fear um, becoming outdated with technology. Uh, so I always try to learn new things, stay on top. Um, because I see, you know, one generation above me, like my parents, they are so behind with technology, they are kind of cut out from many things. So what I'm afraid is that I'll fall behind with, with technology. So I'm always learning constantly. So that sounds like a fear of being irrelevant. I have that fear too. Um, That's actually kind of a common one. Yeah, it's still but no, the same, but... Well, how is it not the same? Because you just said your parents can't keep up, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's irrelevance. But you're just putting it in a specific category of technology. Yeah. I think, well, yeah. Let's let's. Okay. But think about that. Keep on that one going, John. So my fear is probably not being able to do things freely, the way that I wanted to do it. Uh, for example, you know, this last 10 months has been, uh, it's more like, you know, I have to be grounded. I can't travel. I have to work more. Uh, I have to think more. I have to worry more just so that I can, you know, I can bring everyone uh, together. But I, you know, you guys know me. I, if, if I have a choice, I always like try to balance where I work hard and then I, I, I gone away for a couple months a year just so that I can see the world or thing or be with myself. But now it seems like every day I feel like I'm, I'm working harder, not, not because of the fear, but because of I have to. So sometimes I'm, I'm confused and said, wow, I, you know, there's so much more I wanted to do. So it's-, okay. it's uh, And that is? Travel that is the what? world. Okay, so it sounds like you have two things. Well, first of all, I have to make, uh, so one thing's funny you said, I have to think more. I used to have a fear of actually having to think. Are you kidding Yeah, me? a long time ago. And it had to deal with my dad telling me that, does it hurt to uh -oh. use your brain? Because you don't use it very much. Mm -hmm. like, ah, okay, I get that one, John. But it sounds like a combination of a fear of control. So being controlled so you can't do the things that you want to do. And then FOMO, fear of missing out. Hmm. But you're not doing the things that you want to do. It's interesting. You said the fear of control. Control, especially right now, it feels like you don't have control. You have guidelines. I mean, by the way, Angie must go through this all the time in Zimbabwe because the government locks things down, makes it so life is harder. You're, you can't use the freedom that you wish you had to do certain things. And John, you kind of feel like that right now. You're almost like in a regime control yeah. You can't open your restaurant. You can't make money to use the way you used to. You can't provide to your family the way you hope to. So you lost control. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. And yes. by the way, Sammy, you have a different control fear, don't you? 
Yeah, it's pay, it's patience and um and control. So your fear is the fear of losing control and losing patience? No, my patience is it's more of like a timeline, not to think I'm outdated, but it's just like I know things take time and being a millennial, it's just like we want things now and you know, we're we're no longer in a place of living in communities, we're living in networks and that's have just been coded and transcribed into me. So I just have to realize things take time. I'm 28. It's going to be all right. And I remember Sandy told me a good thing. They're like, Sammy, you're supposed to be in the right place at the right time around the right people. And like, that was something that I, it really sunk in. Sammy, I just got to tell you how awesome you look. Guys, Thanks. I'm not sure if you've been paying attention to Sammy. She's going through a transformation. She's been in Bali now for what, two and a half months? I like the hat. I really like Oh, that. the hat rocks. <laughs> Sammy, I just, I just know how hard it is to do a thousand calories every day. I watch your calorie count. You closed your rings yesterday, girl. You're yep. she's a thousand calories. She's working out every day. She's getting, look how shelty you can see how great she looks. And she's sporting that hat like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kid. Yeah. You look awesome. All right. Eddie, 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 what's your fear? Cause he's a control guy. I, I am a control guy. So listen to everybody. I don't know if it's because my dad was a psychiatrist. I'm very grounded. I don't have a fear of missing out or a fear of failing or a fear of not being good enough because that's all part of growth. And my, it is what I've been, you know, what I've learned and what I've lived. My only fear, and Paul knows this, is ghosts. <laughs> I'm that, I mean, that's a real fear to me. Fear of the unknown. And, yeah, and I know that's not what we're talking about, but that's truly the only thing I'm scared of or I'm, I'm fearful of. Actually, that is still included in what we're talking about because if it's fear of ghosts, that's fear of the unknown, unknown. That means it'll prevent you from going into places or adventuring and doing yeah. certain things. I'll, if I'll never, think like, are... we, we took a vacation to look at every church in New England. Andrew loves old churches. I wouldn't go. I stood outside. <laughs> There you go. And I was like, have now fun. Take the beauty pictures. of the church, which could have ignited yeah. your ideas on a new product. On design. I looked at his, I looked at his pictures. <laughs> no, it's not the same. It's like looking at food <laughs> pictures. Oh, that looks good. You got to eat it. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie, it. Eddie, Eddie, has, Eddie, Eddie has phobias, though. But they're not his fear. They're phobias. Phobias well, mean fear. That means fear. <laughs> That's what phobia means, by the way. <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> Like clown this is my work, everybody. It's the classic definition <laughs> for fear is phobia. No, just no. let you know, clowns, little people scare the shit out of him. <laughs> so midget clowns are like terrorizing for him. Terrorizing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no. what, what the uh, definition of phobia: a persistent, abnormal, and irrational fear. fear. Of a specific thing or situation that comp that compels one to avoid it. Yeah, Eddie doesn't have fears. He's got he's phobias. Got even worse than fears. That's even he's the biggest one in the whole group. He's like, ah. What do you got, Mighty Paul? What what's your fear or phobia of? No, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm very similar. I'm very similar to Marco. I I, I really when you first asked the question, I, I said irrelevant. But the other thing is also being invisible, like people not seeing you. As big as I am, sometimes I feel invisible. Actually, thank you for that one, Mighty Paul. I suffered with being unseen for decades. That was one of my biggest phobias or fears was being unseen. Yeah, that one's a big one. Mm. Hi, Janae. There you are with your red marker. Hi, Janae. What's your fear? What do you have a fear of? There you are, Janae. Um, okay. I have a fear of failure. Fear of not achieving my goals. And, and also fear of cockroaches. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Very important. Thank you. It's good to see you, Janae. Did we get everyone? <laughs> good oh, to see you. Steven. Steven. We know what Steven's fear is not. It's not getting an awesome haircut. It was for years. Not anymore. Not anymore. You want to know what my fear is, guys? My fear is that I'm not going to be able to see you guys. No, 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 no. You're going to be able to see us. What's your fear, Stephen? FOMO. For sure. FOMO. There's no yeah. question yeah. about it. Because that I, one is 100% true. Because if anyone knows Stephen from like a year ago, 
he couldn't even miss out on a phone call. He would just rapid fire until you answered. But see, yeah. it's why. <laughs> they gotta, gotta get to the why, right? The reason I have FOMO is because I don't want to miss opportunities where I connect and create community and change the world. So that's why I have well, We're gonna go into definitions. Alan? Uh, procrastination. The fear of procrastination. No, he just, you don't like procrastination? Well, no, it's, it's realizing that that's something to overcome. And, uh, but I'm actually uh, more presently aware of it. And as a result, I'm being more forthcoming and taking the initiative and it's working out actually. Nice. Okay, we'll talk about that. Redna? So uh, Sandy basically said it earlier. It was exactly that, but I feel like as though I'm kind of transitioning out of it um the fear of not being good enough but i think currently it's probably being irrelevant or invisible an invisible one hmm. joette um not being able to take care of myself support myself what would that at be? my age i never used to have this fear before but it's because of my age that i fear that i cannot support myself anymore i won't be able to Feel and it's not it. that i'm not working on it and i'm not it's 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 not taking over my life because I'm working through it and I'm doing things and I handle still, it's still things. Present. It's, it's still, still present. present. Yeah. And my okay. age really has a lot to do with that. Right. Because you're so old. You're I'm older than you. Me. I'm older oh, than you. Yes, on. but but you gotta look at my situation. I'm I'm fifty five. I get it. I get it. I get it. Well, yeah. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Do we get everybody? I think we got everybody, right? Good. Talk about fears. Oh, jeez, uh, you threw that one at me. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, but you're ready for it. That's the one. Th Let me just tell you something about Sandy. She's always ready. The only time she's not ready is when she's snoring. She's kind of mentally snoring right now. No, you're not. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about your fears. First of all, you have to know what you're afraid of. Which they did, right? Did you guys just address that. Then you have to ask yourself, is this true? How do you do that? It's kind of a big one. Well, first of all, Mighty Paul, you said your fear is being unseen. Yes. Let's just lay aside the fear for a minute and look at the facts. Is it true? Yes or no answer, please. That when you walk into a room, people don't see you. No. Is it true that at a group like Metal, People don't know who you are. No. Is it true that when you have a video call thing that you do every week, people don't show up because they don't know who you are because they don't see you? No. There you go. Those are simple ones. I could yes. go in yes. for days and days and days. So we now have to look at what our fears are and ask ourselves if fear. these things are true. And if the answer is no, then we have to then work into obliterating that fear. Or do we look at a fear as something we overcompensate to make sure we're not that? That's so I'm gonna lean in on what Ken just said because I go out of my way to make sure I'm not invisible. But this is where the fear rules have to change for you because you go out of your way to make sure that you're not invisible, which in turn has now obliterated that fear because you're not invisible. But that'd be like the same for Marco being irrelevant when it comes to technology. He overcompensates learning technology or Z when it comes to business, he's overcompensating. He works his tail off. Correct. So now instead of saying it's a fear because fears hold us back, let's change the verbiage and create new rules for it. So like that's where we're going. Jace sitting on this call, the fear of connecting, he literally is connecting at 10 o'clock at night Correct. with that whole COVID scruff going on his face. He should never be on Zoom right now because he looks like a unibar, but he is making sure he's I hit connecting. It for you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So now let's create some real fears that you should we'll have. Create real fears. So so this is what I mean. We have to create new rules for everyone's fears. So I'm only going to fear or feel this way when I, and then have what that thing is. Okay, so give right? me an example. You had a fear of guilt. Oh, I had a big fear of guilt. I mean, a real, yeah. and how did guilt yeah. hold you back? So for example, my fear of guilt was I actually feared, cause you know, you can be guilty, but I feared it because I didn't put myself in a situation 
where the outcome could mean that I was a guilty, I felt guilty. Okay. So I feared it so much that if somebody asked me to help them and I knew I was going to have to say no, and then I would feel guilty, I wouldn't respond to their phone calls or I would say, Oh, I didn't get your message or whatever it was. Right. Because I was avoiding all outcomes of feeling guilt. And so I had to create new rules for that. So the first thing was <laughs> to make a rule that I only felt guilty when. Wait, wait, wait. No, so here's the key. She's giving herself to be guilt, feel guilty. She's giving herself permission based upon a rule set. That's so anyone really out there, anyone out there that likes cryptocurrency, Ethereum, Ethereum has what's called rule sets, meaning, hey, if I want your Ethereum, I can create a rule before you get it. Where Bitcoin, I could just give you a Bitcoin back and forth, trying to be techie right now. So what Sandy's doing is creating a rule set, meaning she can be guilty if, and here's the rule set. Go ahead. So I only feel guilt if I am, and mine was super funny. I would say, I was at a friend's house, sitting on her white couch, drinking a red wine, and I spilled it all over her white couch. First of all, I rarely drink red wine. I mean, like once a year. And I don't think any of my friends own white couches. So the chances of that one happening are so slim. It's possible. It could absolutely happen. We could be there. I could be laughing and I spill my wine all over her white couch. Then I would feel super guilty. But if that does not happen. You get a second rule set. I don't feel guilty at all. Yeah, you get another rule set. I did. I said I would feel guilty if I ran over your dog and killed it with my car. Yeah. I have guilt also. So Sandy taught me a rule set. <laughs> and he's like, I knew, I knew that I would have a guilt issue. I don't have them now because my rule was, and is today, I will give myself permission to feel guilt as if a plane is on a trajectory to crash and I pull a parachute out to jump out of the plane and realizing that there wasn't an extra parachute while I was descending for another person on the plane. I will feel guilty for that person that you left behind. Left behind. It'd probably be me. But a plane had no. Let me give you the first one. You'd be like, I don't know. Hold on, <laughs> You're it'd, be like, it'd be like that cliffhanger movie where my finger, no, my finger detaches. Yeah. Ken would be like, no. Oh. So I have that rule set now. So guilt is, and Sandy always says, I say, oh man, I feel so guilty. She goes, oh really? Are you on a plane? Is it crashing? I go, no, it's not. She goes, then you have no, Stop that. yes. Stop that. So I had to make my, my logic, my rules known to her. So she holds me accountable on top of it. Yeah. So you just said, what is your fear? What is it? So Eddie's fear is ghostly clown midgets. <laughs> That's what Eddie's fear, phobia, excuse me, phobia is. Ghostly clown midgets. So you need to create some new rules around that. And the real rule would be. <laughs> so for example, Eddie could say something like, I will only fear ghosts. Ghostly clown midgets. Ghostly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would be, I would only fear ghosts if it was a midget clown ghost that came into my bedroom, no, no, okay. flashing me, no, wait, something wait. like that. No, and then to... you'll fear it. No, wait, this Fearing prevents him from going into cool we churches. We need to let him make his own fear uh, But it has to be more realistic. Like, for example, if that church is known to have a ghost clown midget, I will not go in it. Oh, really? You don't have a ghost clown midget? I'm going in. <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> you have to create. So I want you all right now to again, identify what that fear was. Like Marco said, the fear of? Um, techno not being no, technology, relevant. technology advanced, relevant. Relevant, yeah. his fear is relevance. So he has to create a rule set around that relevance. Mighty Paul's is the fear of? Uh, not being seen. Okay, create a rule set to where maybe you walk in a room and you're the smallest person <laughs> in the room. <laughs> it's a group of sumo wrestlers. It's true. And you're wearing a tuxedo. Maybe a tonga, because some of those guys are bigger than you. <laughs> oh, much, much. <laughs> so you have to create a realistic rule set. We all have to do this right now. So Angie, your fear of not able to, uh, to feel small, Unseen, you could yeah. only feel We're small if you're literally at the, the UN and all the world's presidents are there 
and you walk in and they ask you to give a talk on designer um, pastas. There you go. There's a rule set. Then you can feel that. You can feel, I mean, so you have to create it. We can't create it. Z, your rule is, and by the way, it's so funny, someone like you who has this fear of not doing as much as possible or not being like everyone else, you're one of the hardest working people in the world. So you overcompensate. By the way, doesn't it look great for being 10 o'clock at night there? Well, who are you pointing to? Z. We've got so, like the hottest light on his face. Like but, but the whole thing, but even the shadows in the room, doesn't it look like it's it daylight? Is, it does look like you're in the creepy so, basement. Red lights. It looks good. It looks good. Basement bunker. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so like John, not having control or not or losing control, your rule set is I will only not, it's funny. Could you imagine that two years ago? Okay, I will feel out of control if a pandemic hits and the government says I cannot do these things. <laughs> well, so true. Then yeah. it is a valid fear. You can feel that. Fear. Yeah, but that's not your rule set right now. We're rewriting our rules to allow us to fear whatever it is. Joette, same thing. The fear of taking care of yourself. You have to create a rule that's realistic. And you know, no, 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 no. It has to be slightly out of reach. Oh, does it? So it has to be something that can tangibly, physically happen, I'm but on, not very easy. I'm on planes all the time. None of them crashed yet. But how many planes are you on with access to a parachute? They all should have parachutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, I don't They've got know. that balloon oh, slide. Oh, that's right, balloon He's slide. He's gonna grab it and balloon slide down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want us to think about our rule sets. So we could place these rules. It sounds really stupid, everyone. It really does. It works. But the minute you identify that rule set and say it to yourself, and then all of a sudden you're starting to feel, oh, I fear the fear of missing out. Well, wait, I doesn't comply to my rule set. I, I didn't, I'm not missing out then. So, and then, okay. So it's not just a matter of creating a rule for what you're going to put that fear in. That's really important. Actually, everybody do that first because next we're gonna go into the new rule for yourself. So let's start with uh, Sammy, your fear. Say your fear and what a new rule is for your fear. I have my praxis out. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, okay, go so ahead. I put control, so I will not, I will only feel not having control when I am in the passenger seat next to Obama. <laughs> there you go. Like it. All right. Okay, it's totally plausible. It, it is. could physically happen. The odds. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Nora, what's yours? I don't know if I can beat Sammy's, uh, but uh, I have to come. You have to come back to me. Let me just give me a minute to think about it. <laughs> All right, you have a minute. Everyone else, think about yours right now. So you don't know if I'm going to pick on you. I'm not going to give anyone else a minute. Jace, what's yours? Yeah, it's so incredibly complicated, but uh, I'll only steer connection if I have to save a life. If you have to save, save a, a life. life, you have to get more specific. Yep. And I have to save a life while mountain biking on the Himalayan Ridge and my, I have a flat tire and somebody is dangling by their panty line. And you're riding a, a Huffy 10 speed. Okay, that, 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 we're gonna go with that. that it has to be yours. yours. It can't be yeah, ours. It can't be mine. It has to be okay. yours. Uh, I'll only fear a connection if I have to save a man or woman drowning in the Aegean Sea. Ooh, there you go. You better avoid that Aegean Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Don't go there. Eddie, not you going. wanna go? Okay, rule set. You got your rule set now. I will not fear ghosts as they cannot no, hurt no, no. me. I will only fear. I will only fear ghosts if they can hurt me. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I'm because afraid you of fear ghosts. ghosts, so logically you think they can. So I will only fear ghosts if they Show up Give in the form of this part. Cake pie. If what? <laughs> no, can't stop adding ones. Okay, go, Eddie. Uh, I will not fear ghosts. Uh, no, I, I will only fear. I will only fear ghosts 
if I walk into an ICU? And? That's it. I don't go into ICUs. <laughs> yeah, but, but, <laughs> so I avoid it. <laughs> okay, so an example would be, I would only fear ghosts if I walked into an ICU on Halloween night. That's fantastic. Wearing? A comfy. <laughs> Wearing a something costume. A Wonder Woman Freeze. costume. Wonder yeah. Woman, yes. It could happen. It could. Well, happen. It could. Because <laughs> a gay man like you in a Wonder Woman outfit looks pretty freaking awesome. Mm. <laughs> I've seen it before. Chase? Yeah, I was gonna say, I actually ran around India last Halloween dressed up like Wonder Woman, and it was incredible. <laughs> Hashtag truth. Yeah. All right, who else would like to give theirs? Alan. Well, I only fear procrastination if the elevator door opens and I step in, but there's no elevator, just a shaft. Ooh, that would really say you got the shaft. But I don't understand how that would lead to procrastination. Because if he stepped in, he would be dead and there would, yeah, but what, he that, would never what's the get anything to procrastination? done. What's the he would be in his ghostly state haunting Eddie and fearing the procrastination. No, but what, what, what's the, do you, do you feel an elevator association with procrastination? Well, no, just that uh, uh, the hesitation of doing something, um, if, it, if it involves an open elevator shaft, then I won't procrastinate. Otherwise, I'll take initiative. I don't, I don't understand the correlation. That's correct. So you will always take initiative as long as there is no open elevator shaft. Or an elevator that opens to an empty elevator. Yes. Okay. So, that works. Okay. okay. Marco. Track. Sorry, guys. I got distracted. It's it's my birthday today, January what? 15th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> not, birthday. not yet in Los Angeles, but in Dubai, it's already January 13th. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I'm shopping for pajama here. pants. So, <laughs> well deserved. Well, happy birthday from this side of the world. But, um, I'll be, what's the, what's the sentence? I'll be afraid. I will only fear. Oh, I will only fear if I can, if I cannot remember any of my passwords. No, that's, no, that's no. always going to happen. That, I, yeah. I never remember my passwords. Yeah. Ask me one. I, oh, I always fear. remember them. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it is, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same password. Yeah, that's why, right? It, it's password with an exclamation yeah, point. It's one, two, three, four, four, five. <laughs> but lowercase p, not uppercase. <laughs> Mirror image. All right, all right, guys. Let's I, move on to get to the next. I segment. only fear irre uh, irrelevance when. Oh. Um, g give me a minute. I'll, I'll order the pan, the pajama pants, and then I'll come back. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Get your okay, pajamas okay. No, on. let's move on. Okay, so that is your fear rule. So now you have to apply a new condition to your fear. So what does that look like? So um, what is the opposite of the thing that you're feeling? And then you have to pour into that thing. So for Mighty Paul, it's feeling unseen. So now you have to say what you will feel seen as. So I will feel seen when I am doing my live metal event call each week, right? So you have to come up with that thing in. And the reason we're creating that lineup, that verbiage of when you actually will feel that is so that if you did a comparison, if you're walking into a room, Angie, and you're immediately, is she still there? I don't know if she dropped off. So for example, if Angie walks into a room and feels beneath yes, yeah. everyone else, right? Is that applied to her fear rule that she just created, right? I will only feel fear when, and if the answer is no, then she can apply the next rule, right? So I will feel when she's walking that thing. And you want to feel that thing even more. So as it's happening, you really want to feel into it, to acknowledge it, to completely that. obliterate your fear. Give me an example for yourself. So for example, um, my fear was feeling guilty. 
So I don't feel guilty when, right? And then I would say what that thing is, when I am sharing my knowledge with the world. So I feel the opposite of guilt. I feel like I'm pouring into everyone. I feel like I'm really giving, right? So when I'm sharing my knowledge with the world, I feel amazing. So you guys have to figure out what that thing is, that counter thing. I feel, I don't feel irreverent uh, being irrelevant when I am connecting people and sharing knowledge and wisdom from wherever we're at, where I'm at. That's what we're always sharing on, on Instagram stories. We're always, I'm always making sure I'm relevant by doing those tasks. So if you're watching our Instagram stories, we're very relevant. We're sharing what we see, not to show off, but to share. So, so for Ken, instead of saying, I will not feel irrelevant because we're trying to avoid the negative part, mm -hmm. it's I will feel relevant when I share and connect my knowledge with the world. Yep. Okay. So does that make sense? Jace, you want to touch upon now? Because you're, go for it. What, what's yours? Uh, I'll feel connection when I'm in moments like this. I mean, I know that's kind of simplified, but it's, it's true. That's beautiful. That's exactly right. So what that means for Jace, everyone, is when he's on a call like this and he's engaging and he's enjoying it, he can fully feel into the feeling of being connected. And you have to exercise that, Jace. So I have been personally trying to get you inside our community. Personally, I don't do that for many. So I want you to make sure you do an extra step and now fulfill that what I've done, okay? Because I, I don't want to be a broken record of repeating myself over and over. Excuse me, a skip CD. And my kids still go, what's a CD? It's a record. It's a record. But just kind of now take it to the next level. So let's go back to um, Eddie. Can we touch upon Eddie since we just touched? Yes. Eddie, where would Eddie now overcompensate for his fear? So um, you have to talk about you're, you're afraid of ghosts. So what would the opposite of that be for you? I would not be fearful of ghosts if I'm around loved ones. Okay, so you're, you would say, so we don't want to use the word not because it's negative. So you would say, I accept ghosts when I walk into them with loved ones. Do you see something like that? So when I walk into a room where they would be with loved ones. So now if you're going to enter that church, you can be afraid of that church, knowing that there is a midget clown, clown ghost in there, right? <laughs> but if you're with your husband and you walk in knowing that he's protecting you and that you will not, that, that fear is obliterated, right? Because you accept that they're there because you're with someone that you love. Now it makes it easier and you can feel that as you're entering the room. That fear still might be there slightly in the back of your heart, but knowing that you're with someone that you love should overweigh that fear. And the more you do it, the stronger it becomes. So with John then, the fear of not being in control, he has to overcompensate by working harder. No. No? No. What would it be? He has to now assign what that new fear oh, that's feeling. So the opposite of control. So not, not being in control, what would the opposite be? And give that a rule. In control. Yes, being in control. So I, I will be in control when I, what would that be for you, John? I will be in control when, I don't know. You know, like this whole thing happened because of, I think it's a pandemic. So is it like, okay, if I say, hey, I will get the vaccine next week. So There's nothing to do with you not being in control. Yeah. Think about what you can't, what are you able to control in your business and your life? The way you market yourself, the way you're posting things inside communities, the thing that yeah. you're doing now with hospitals and people on front line, that's putting you more in control as opposed to being passive and allowing things to control you. Mm-hmm. Well, I know I can control like making people happy with my food. There. That's Boom. for sure. That's yeah. it. I will be in control each time I make a delicious meal for my clients. So now yeah. you might feel out of control when these rules that you had set are there. But every time you hand a client that meal, you feel in control. And you've got to sink into that feeling of control and, and allow it to envelop you. So when you hand something yep. to someone, it feels mm -hmm. so good because you know at that moment in time, you are fully in control. Z, go for it. Yes. I don't feel fear of failure because that would be failure in a way. Like feeling you on behind everyone is kind of a sense of failure. I don't feel fear of failure. It's hard to hear you, Z. It's hard to hear you. Speak up a little more. Um, 
I said, I don't feel fear of failure uh, when I know I've accomplished the most I can in any given day. Like I try to be as like active and work as long as possible and, and for toward my goal in any given day. Okay. So instead of using the word, I don't feel, because remember trying to avoid the negative, what is the opposite for you for the feeler, the feeling of failure? I feel successful. Mm. Okay. Now try that again. I feel successful when? When I check all the boxes on my list it, throughout any given day, when I'm the most efficient I can be, like the mo I've done the most I can toward my goal. Okay, Every single day. So I'm going to challenge so, you on that. Sorry. I'm going to challenge you on that one because there are days where you have a list. Let's say you have 10 things on your list and there's a fire in your building. Yeah. Your cat gets sick. Cool cat. Your mom calls and needs something urgently for you to pick up for her. Okay. And your all internet stuff. goes out all in the same day. Right. So that list of 10 things is physically impossible. I are you going to I pivot. like a I, failure I'll at the end of that day? Else. I always go, I, I can't do this, I'll do this. I do this, I'll do this. As long as I'm moving forward. Right. So it should, it, it, I would suggest that you just tweak that a little bit and say, I will feel success if I'm able to complete even one important thing from my list, regardless of the challenges of the day. Something like that. That way you're not going to feel that failure because if you have that list of 10 things you didn't complete at all and, and it's completely out of your control and you didn't get to any of it because there were so many challenges, you're going to feel like a failure. So you have to make sure you, you, you supplement that with something that's more realistic. Makes sense? Okay. Yeah. By the way, uh, I noticed this beautiful ring on your finger. I know, look at my ring. <laughs> it's Ken's practice ring for me. It's like a promise ring. <laughs> wow. It's emeralds. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right, everyone. Oh, and it's from the 1800s. It's really old. Okay, like me. Yeah. Everyone, thank you so much. Happy birthday to Marco. Everyone, thank you for sharing time with us. Happy birthday, Marco. Thank you. Everyone, please put this on your calendar. Happy Every birthday. time, this time, we're going to be together. So make sure if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day of the week it is for you, hang out with us, okay? And get more. And thank you so much, Jason. Happy to become a metal member. Everyone, have a great week. Good night, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.